I am here today with Dr. Nicole Conkle. Dr. Nicole, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Lee. Now, Dr. Nicole is a specialist in organizational design, and she helps organizations manage one of their most important resources, their mm -hmm. people. Yes. So, Dr. Nicole, uh, I asked you to come on today to talk a little bit about what should happen in the workplace with regards to appropriate use of social media while at work. Yes, get rid of it all. <laughs> I'm kidding, kidding, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, I happen to um, have had an opportunity to be in leadership positions in a lot of different roles. Mm -hmm. And in those roles, um, I've noticed some best practices that, you know, employees and people who are looking to um, get a job should and should not do. And one of the best pieces of advice that I can give people is if you have to pause for one second to think if this should be on social media, don't put it on social media. Everybody is looking at social media, potential employers, um, your current employer, um, when managers, when you're calling out sick <laughs> to um, see if you actually are sick or if you're pulling a Ferris Bueller stay off for those of us old enough to know what that <laughs> means um, and at the Cubs game or whatever the case may be. And so I would just tell people to always be thinking about mm -hmm. what you want your professional history on social media to be like, not today, but five years from now, 10 years from now, however long you plan on w working. Yeah. I, I think I, we had a conversation many years back where uh, it went something like, oh, well, but Lee, I have my, my, so my Facebook locked down. Yeah. And I said to you at the time, you just got to assume that anything you post might right. get out there. In fact, with events that happen, right. hopefully that advice was helpful. Yeah, so it was funny because I really argued you down about that. I'm like, no, no one can see my Facebook. But today, um, maybe it's probably seven to 10 years later, I am in 100% agreement. I never post anything about my work. Um, I never post anything about the day I've had at work. <laughs> I've never post anything that could be negatively construed by um, my company, by a competitor. Um, I just don't want that out there. And so I make a conscious effort to make sure that my posts are pretty much meaningless <laughs> yeah. and don't have anything to do with my career. But there's also things that people should do, such as locking down your Facebook posts so the world doesn't see them. For sure. And you have to be careful because Facebook changes the app and every now and then it will flip back. Especially right. like if you choose to post something publicly, which like my blog videos, I'll post those pub publicly, I have to remember to go back and change the setting For back sure. to be private. So that's something to be aware of as well. Yes, and the other thing, Lee, is I would say if, if we're talking about Facebook and social media, wh whatever platform you're using, go back monthly and see what they might have changed. Mm -hmm. um, you just never know. I have put things as private and then a month or two months or three months later, I go and look and it's public. Um, because How does that make you feel? It's like, oh my gosh, I did not <laughs> want this public Facebook. That's why I had it private first. And, and that's not to pick on any one social media mm -hmm. um, outlet, but they change things all the time. It, it's social media. They're trying to make things mm -hmm. um, user friendly for all of us and, and, and you know, be able to share as much information or as little as possible. But check that and make sure mm -hmm. that what you want out there for the public um, is out there for the public and what you don't is mm -hmm. not. Uh, and another thing too that you might want to do as well is you can lock yourself down so that people can't find you. Um, I recommend that people have their children use pseudo names if they're going to be on Facebook, right? right? So that they're not their real names aren't out there because this stuff gets archived. There's websites like Peak You that find ways of seeing your stuff. Yeah and can get your archives that you think are locked down. Yeah, and one other thing I think is very beneficial um, to people that are searching for employment is that you make it comp make your profiles completely private when you're searching for a job. Um, because me- <laughs> And don't use an email name that sounds sexualized. <laughs> yes, I mean, honestly. sexy kitten 1995 <laughs> is probably not gonna get you that job. Um, but just be mindful that, and, and I have done this before as, a, as an employer, 
career. I've gone to social media to see what people's presence has been to determine if there was anything there that would keep me for key positions and roles that I've hired for, keep mm -hmm. me from wanting to hire that person. So the dates and times of your posts matter too. If, if you've got regular posts on social media that don't somehow tie into your work, it's a problem. Now, now sometimes you got to post stuff on LinkedIn right. to help market your, your yes. firm and their mission. And that's one thing. But just, you know, ask those questions and think about does this does this show that I'm a diligent worker if I'm commenting and tweeting all day on, uh, all day <laughs> on entertainment websites and things right. that don't relate to your position. Right. And one thing that I have said, um, I'm gonna I've never heard anyone else say this, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's my quote. Facebook is not LinkedIn and LinkedIn is not Facebook. If the profiles of the people that you have on both of those match, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> Where LinkedIn is for your professional, um, you know, world and Facebook isn't. And there are some people I'm Facebook friends with who have sent me LinkedIn requests that I'm not connected to because that's not the way I want to be connected mm -hmm. to those people. And you absolutely have the right to do that because it's your social media. Yeah, and unfortunately, the people you connect to you could be judged against who your friends are and that's always a dilemma because we can't control our, our, our family all the time. All we can do is drop them. Uh, I've had to <laughs> you know, do that a couple friends. of times. <laughs> but but you know, it's unfortunate sometimes when extended family or people that you might not be checking in with post things in their profile, inappropriate pictures or whatnot right. that could re potentially reflect adversely on you. And the thing is is if someone if you're interviewing me for a job you're doing the digging. You're not telling me what you're looking of at, are you? Of course not, no. But you're looking to see, is this going to be a problem for me if I hire this person? Right. And and I'll, I'll give a quick example of you know something that it was problematic for me um, when I was doing research. I did see that someone I was potentially hiring had a, a person on their friend list that was making racist and sexist comments. Yeah. And I think everyone and, out there has a friend like that, which yes. is exactly why you should be locking down and hiding your friends so people can't right. find out. Yeah, so if you go search me right now, you won't see much and you certainly won't see my friend list. But the other side of that is, you know, if I have people on my page that are making those types of remarks, guess what? They're, they're gone. I don't care if it's my mother. I don't care who it is because mm -hmm. that is not any type of social media um, conversation that I want had on my page, nor do I want to be a part of it. Well, thanks so much for being on the show, Nicole. It's been great having you. Thanks for having me, Lee.